Hello everyone, this is a screencast to show how to do equilibrium calculations when the k value, the equilibrium constant, is either very large or very small. And we'll do this via a couple examples uh, just to get the general principle across. So our first example is, let's say we have a reaction um, x plus 2y makes xy2 and let's say that the k sub c for this is 4.0 times 10 to the eighth. Okay, so that is a very large value of k. And remember, of course, that a very large value of k means that this reaction is very product favored. And so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the reaction goes essentially to completion going to the right. And we'll then do our usual method of I, C, and E, ice table, initial change in equilibrium. Uh, but we're going to use this concept of the, the reaction goes to completion if the K is very large. And so um, let's do some sort of hypothetical possible initial values. Let's say we start with one molar X and let's say five molar Y and 2.5 molar XY2. Well, what's going to happen since K is very large and this reaction is very product favored, the reaction is going to go pretty close to as far to the right as, as it can. And what that means is the reaction will go this direction as far as it can, which is going to mean in this case, and in many cases, we're going to have to consider if we have a limiting reactant and what happens. Um, now looking at the values, if the reaction goes to the right, X and Y concentrations will go down and XY2 concentration will go up. That will happen until we run out of one substance. And by inspection, we can see which one that's going to be. We have one molar X, five molar uh, Y, and 2.5 molar uh, XY2. So we're going to run out of X in this case. The reaction will use up all the X, so X concentration will go down by one, one molar. Since uh, Y has a coefficient of two, that's going to go down by two molar. And since XY2 has a coefficient of one, that will go up by one molar. And so then at equilibrium, the X concentration will be basically zero. It won't be exactly zero. We'll come back to that in a moment, but it'll be very, very close to zero. The Y concentration will decrease to three molar and the XY2 concentration will increase to 3.5 molar. So all we're doing is using stoichiometry, the concept of limiting reactant, and assuming that the reaction goes essentially as far to the right as it can. Okay, now we will of course remember that the K sub C expression is products over reactants, so X, Y, 2 concentration over X concentration times Y concentration squared. And that is going to, well, let's see, let's look at our values. X, Y, 2 is 3.5 concentration. X is approximately zero, but it's not exactly zero. Um, so we're actually going to want to find that. So let's just put concentration of X there. We're trying to find that. And then Y is three molar and that gets squared. And then of course that value of the equilibrium constant was given for us 4.0 times 10 to the eighth. So we now have an equation where we know everything except X we should be able to solve. And solving for X 
we'll multiply both sides by x and then divide both sides by 4.0 times 10 to the eighth. So this will give us x equals 3.5 over 3.0 squared times 4.0 times 10 to the eighth. And that works out to be 9.7 times 10 to the minus 10th molar. Very small as expected, uh, or as predicted, uh, but not exactly zero. And the 3 molar and 3.5 molar will, of course, um, be a little bit tiny less or more than those values, but uh, the amount that they differ by is completely negligible by comparison to their concentrations and the number of sig figs that we know. So we're getting a couple of our concentrations at equilibrium. The concentration of y at equilibrium is 3 molar, and the concentration of xy2 at equilibrium is 3.5 molar. We get those just by stoichiometry and assuming the reaction goes as far to the right as it can. And then the thing that's really close to zero, we essentially solve for that by using the k sub c setup, and then we get its value. And then, of course, you can always plug these equilibrium values back into the k sub c expression and check to see if you get a k sub c value of about 4 times 10 to the 8th, and the check does, in fact, work. Okay, so now let's try a second one, this time with k being small, and see how that works. So uh, this time, let's uh, go with a hypothetical reaction of AB plus 2C makes AC plus BC with a k for this reaction of 4.0 times 10 to the minus 8th this time. So what's going to happen now is, once again, we have a small, very small, k value. This means that this process is very reactant, favored, and that means that the reaction goes we're going to say to completion, we're going to assume that it goes as far to completion as it can, but this time to completion will be going to the left to make uh, as much uh, reactants as it can. Uh, we will once again invoke limiting reactant concept in that some uh, substance is going to be used up, and we're going to track what that is and sort of do the same thing as we did for the large k sub c value, but now uh, with the process being favored on the reactant side instead. So um, let's, oh, and we'll do our initial change in equilibrium in the same way. And so let's say this time, uh, let's be unimaginative. Let's say we have one molar uh, starting concentrations of each of our substances. So one molar AB, one molar C, one molar AC, and one molar BC. And the reaction now is going to go as far in that direction as it can. We're gonna see if we use up anything. And since AC and BC both are one molar, kind of looks like they're both going to get used up. And by inspection, we can then say the concentrations of AC and BC will go down, concentrations of AB and C will go up, AC will go down by one molar, as will BC, AB will go up by one molar, and C will go up by two molar because of the coefficient of two. That will give us essentially zero of both AC and BC at equilibrium. Again, they won't be exactly zero, but to first approximation, they're very, very close to zero. AB will be two molar, and C will be three molar at equilibrium. And now, as we did on the previous one, 
we have a k sub c which we know will be products ac times bc over reactants ab times c squared and that equals our k sub c value of 4.0 times 10 to the minus 8 and then notice at equilibrium we know our concentrations uh, very uh, closely to what they actually are, 2 molar and 3 molar for A, B, and C. Uh, these concentrations will be only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit less than that, um, but not enough different that we'd ever be able to tell to our precision. So we will have A, B concentration is 2 molar, and C concentration is 3 molar, and that gets squared. And then AC and BC are not zero, they're just very small. They're both going to be the same, and so we can substitute in the AC concentration times the BC concentration, but those two concentrations are the same, so that's essentially x squared over 2.0 times 3.0 squared, which equals 4.0 times 10 to the minus 8. So if we solve this, we will get that x equals, well, let's do it this way first, x squared is going to equal um, 2.0 times 3.0 squared times 4.0 times 10 to the eighth, the k sub c value, sorry, 10 to the negative eighth, and that equals um, 7.2 times 10 to the minus seventh. Now that's x squared, so if we square root both sides, x equals square root of x squared equals square root of 7.2 times 10 to the minus seventh, which equals 8.5 times 10 to the minus fourth molar and that is our concentration of AC as well as our concentration of BC. And so we now know the AB concentration is 2 molar. We got that just from stoichiometry and limiting reactant. C concentration is 3 molar at equilibrium. Same thing, got that by stoichiometry limiting reactant and the assumption reaction goes to completion. And then AC and BC are very small, but not exactly zero. And by using the case of C expression, we get what those two values are as well. And then of course, we can substitute these values into our case of C expression check and see if that in fact does give us a k sub c value of 4.80 times 10 to the minus 8th, which it should if we did the math right, and that checks out. So that's the basic idea on um, kind of a simple way to deal with very large and very small k values by assuming the reaction goes to completion, whichever direction it goes, using limiting reactants, sort of a chem 1a idea, uh, and then only doing the math to solve for the concentrations of the things that are very small. So hope that's helpful and goodbye.